Hello everyone and welcome back uh, to the second day for our first project on data driven framework. Uh, this is Karthik. Let's get started. So team primarily yesterday what did we do? Let's take a quick peek at that and then uh, we will proceed with today's session. So what we started doing yesterday and which is there in one of the Google Drive folders out here is uh, the fact that we have developed a simple automation plan, right? I'm not sure if any of you have already been invited to it, but uh, slowly you'll start seeing all of you will get invited uh, to this folder. You'll all have access to it. Please do make sure that you do not delete anything, all right? So the couple of documents which are very important for you uh, is one is that approach document that I was uh, showing initially and then more importantly the automation plan. So I'm quickly going to open up the automation plan and we'll talk about the website once again. So 401kcalculator.org is what we identified as the application. Uh, the domain is finance industry. We will be doing a certain amount of functional testing and regression testing in it. And what is out of scope is any kind of a UI performance and services testing. In fact, as part of this, we will not be testing everything. There are specific test cases that we will work with. And so we have designed two very, very simple test cases. Uh, this is not the end of a test case. This is just the beginning of how we've put information together and we've placed it. Very importantly, what we started doing team is we started talking about the data driven framework plan. How do we go about doing all of these important activities? If you remember yesterday team, I mentioned that I will be downloading HP uh, Unified Functional Testing, the version 12.01. This is the latest one that you'll find in HP.com onto a Windows machine and use the trial version to uh, showcase its capabilities. I have done that and here is the UI of the Unified Functional Testing that I was talking about. Unified functional testing is nothing but the new name that HP has coined for the earlier uh, quick test professional or before that the WinRunner tool that you probably are aware. So going forward, it's going to be UFT for unified functional testing or QTP. I may keep uh, using them uh, based interchangeably because I get used very quickly to I got used a lot to QTP as a word. All right, so uh, going back to the plan, where is the plan? Okay, there you go. So we've talked about the application under test, a quick overview of it. I did that. So I'm putting a column called status so we know how much portion of what we have done. We've identified two test cases only so far. So I'll just put it as 75%. Why is it not 100%? Why is it not 25%? Because number one, we will not be doing more than two or three test cases in this project. Two is there will be certain things that may keep coming up. So it's never really complete uh, to that level. The next one was identifying the test data. What are those test data items? So for each test case, you know that it is made of one or more steps. As you see each step, you we have then went about seeing that does that step require a test data? Yes or no? And then we started putting that information out here. So this I'm going to call it as a sal for annual salary. It is uh, maintaining the same conversion. So the first letter in lowercase and then of the first word and then the second uh, word uh, more abbreviated uh, in three characters. All right. Now, what is our next plan? Our next plan is to prepare some sample test data. I wouldn't say the test data. I will call it more as sample test data. Okay. And we'll go about doing it. So far, so good team. Now, uh, did we do a quick roundup of what we want, what we covered yesterday? All right. I'm assuming we're all good there, right? Uh, audio, screen, everything. Can you just quickly mention it in the chat so I can proceed from there? All right, awesome. Thank you so much, team. And team, just to let you know, there are over 100 participants in this batch, and hence it becomes very important for me to go in a very smooth flow. And there will be questions that will come out, but most of them may be common. And I will go through each and every question as it is apt, as time permits for us, okay? So we'll get to them as we go through the session. All right, so now we are talking about preparing the sample test data. 
in fact what we will do is we will do some amount of color combinations it is easy for us to see the progress so i'm going to identify these and make them as green as i believe that we have made some significant progress on each step so these remaining steps are still not yet um, done so nothing much there so how do we prepare test data so what do i mean by test data and how do we go about doing it let me see if i can quickly take a notepad and the reason i'm taking a notepad is just to use it as a background and then i'm going to use the drawing tool that comes within um uh, the go to webinar to draw some things out there okay so you remember team yesterday i talked about there is this application let's talk about this box being the application please uh, excuse my drawing skill especially with the laptop mouse not that great at all then i said that we have inputs different types of inputs that come in and then depending on what inputs we do this engine will process the information and give output what is that engine in this case a 401k calculator if i am at a certain age this is how much i earn this is how much i invest this is when i plan to retire then how much will be my output at that time correct so i change the set of data or information even be it a small change you will see the output varying so what we are doing is we are doing different sets of data each dot for example representing one set of data and then we want to see how the effect will be so what does that mean that means that in this case i will have different sets of data identified so to identify what they are uniquely i will call them as td id or test data id identification simple team there is no rocket science in anything that i've done so far very simple logical nothing to do which is automation or complex things at all very simple just like any layman you are the first day of your ever it project kind of thing now this will let us identify what that data is so i'll say this is td001 what do i mean i'm saying what will follow for this will be a specific set of data now let us talk about the names of the variable okay all of these are the variable names so the union rather all the different sets of data to your test cases you will take them and start putting them as a column sorry as a row so here i'm going to do a control oops control c as soon as i switch between a mac and a windows pc the how we do a copy paste everything will uh, change is there in google drive a transpose paste special yeah paste transpose what this does is transpose is basically a feature team where if i have everything in a column what is this the highlighted one b is a column if i highlight this one it's a row so if i have data in a column and i want to move it as different columns out here instead of all in one column then i do something called as paste as with a special as paste transpose do you see this and then what it does is it will take the same data but put it in this specific manner all right so i don't have to manually go about doing it this is called a transpose paste team uh control c i'll move it this way oops control c control v i don't need this data anymore i don't need this data now what happened is the specific set of test data that we've used that in the test case i've moved it here as columns okay so for example let us talk about one set of data just for an example and then we will continue to add more data as we move forward so here this is oops didn't i copy it control c control v and let's talk about an annual salary in this case let us talk about something like 75000 us dollars that is the number okay what is 401k do you, do you anyone remember is it a percentage see this is where one of the key things that really affects our ability to be great 
QA professionals, forget about manual or automation, is our command on the knowledge itself uh, of the application. So if I go to 401kcalculated.org, where is what? What is this each of these fields? How does it work? How is that functionality working? You should be a master at it. Okay. Mastering the application functionality becomes very, very important team. Please always remember that. So right now we're talking about this is contribution to 401k and it is a percentage. All right. So how do you master? You keep on working day after day, day after day and so on. Then we go about identifying how uh, the application works. You become a master at it. You don't start with a specific skill over a period of time. You build it. So 401k is a percentage. So I'll just say here 7%, for example. I'm just taking this as example still. Okay. 7%. Then CH. What is CH? Anyone remember? Again, remember functionality, domain, your knowledge on the application is key. If you are not knowledgeable on the application, doesn't matter how good you are in manual testing or automation does not matter. Current age. Let us say the current age is 33. Let's say that we wish to retire when we are 58. Just an example. This is one set of data that we wish to see how the application behaves at this. Similarly, I will create a variation to it. Now I'll say the salary is not that high. It's more like 55,000. I will do more in terms of a 401k investment. Current age is let's say 29 and we plan to retire at 60. In this way, how many combinations of different sets of data you could provide? Many. So there is no real end to it, but you will see how we can effectively create something called as a framework, which you don't know yet, uh, to make it very powerful, your overall script. So I'm going to quickly give this some color. Everyone with me team, I, it's very important. Stay focused on what I'm showing, what I'm doing, because this will really help us. Now let's go back to where our plan. Do you see this? See, we have a checklist of things that we need to do. We do something, we come here, we update it. So we prepared some sample test data. Is it everything? No, it's just a little bit. So I'll just say 25%. All right, so 25% status. So this is not fully completed. So I'll just put it as yellow, light yellow, okay? Now let's talk about identifying the objects in the application and the test. This is important. If I need to talk about the application and the test and the objects and all that, uh, before I go there, let us see, I told you yesterday, there will be a lot of chances that I may insert new steps in between. So this, I'll call it as 4.1, just a new step. So that way I'm not losing the order and I don't have to change everything. Yes, do a simple record and run using UFT. Why do I want to do this thing? Why do I wish to do this? I wish to do this so that you get a basic fundamental idea to begin with. And then we will go about exploring a little bit more and that will be the last time that you will see a record and run being done today. After this, we will not. Just for you to see how things will work. So before we do something called as a record and run, let me close the IE browser. Okay, I'm going to close all tabs. Uh, the notepad also I don't need. And here is HP Unified Functional Testing. Now let's take a quick look at something called as UI or user interface for any tool. How many of you have worked in Microsoft Word or in Excel or PowerPoint or Notepad? Any application, any application that you see, it is almost very similar to that team. It has got a menu bar. It has got various features that you will use as part of it. Okay. As you use it, as you see me using it, you will get better and better at it. And you'll see how your overall skill will improve. Okay. Now, the first thing that we will do is we will say that I will create a new test. Do you see this? We are creating a new test. We are not worried about the business component solution, library and other features at the moment. Basic thing, we will not a solution. We, will, we are creating a new test. So file, new, test. What happened? File, new, 
and test or you can use the shortcut key as controller and this one we will call it as a GUI test okay what is a GUI testing GUI test is basically graphical user interface what it it gives you the ability to do some kind of a test on a UI application on an application that you can see and interact with all right give me a minute please One second team. Okay. All right. So as soon as I said that, it has created this layout and it has put some stuff there. I don't want any of you to worry about anything that you see out here. Okay. Just ignore everything. It doesn't matter. All that I want you to focus initially is something called as an action one. And here you see a blank space just like a text document a notepad and this is where we'll focus most of our time in okay everything else is not really essential at this point in time all right however what does a record and run mean within QTP let me quickly introduce that not spend too much time what we're trying to tell is QTP can you please understand a certain activity and do it back to us how, what do I mean by that? Very simple thing. It's like a robot. Okay. You can teach it to do certain activity. I want QTP to learn to go and execute those steps. Steps of going to a website, entering your annual income, entering the uh, 401k contribution, age and so on and clicking on calculate. Why do I want to do it? Because it will do eventually something called as an ERA and remind me on this I will talk about ERA as a concept on um, on Monday the next session okay so it's not uh, drawing anything right now can you see anything I think it's doing it in the background not on the foreground no so yeah ERA team uh, there's nothing but something called as efficiency reusability and accuracy All right. every framework or every automation that we do has to be bound on these three factors being efficient being able to reuse and being accurate how what I will explain it to you for now what you and I need to focus is how does a record and run work right now all I'm saying is QTP or UFT look at what I am doing and learn that process is called record okay see what I'm doing observe it and learn that and the way we do a record is very simple thing you see this red button that is the record key. so click on it and it will get into a mode called record it says record and run test on any open browser or open the following at this when record run session begins you can use either right now there is no Internet Explorer browser open so I'm going to go and click on open the following address when a record or run session begins. Remember this. Either of them is fine. In fact, I don't care even if you learn this or not. It's just for your information. Now here I'm going to put our URL and your URL is HTTP colon slash slash 401k calculator calculator dot org and we're using Internet Explorer and say apply. That's it and say okay. Now it should open up the application and it is now in a position to start learning things so at this point if I can quickly this PowerPoint is open so I want to make sure that it's all closed right now not needed what happens is it will start recording a lot of things okay so far it has not done much okay so I have aligned the windows team using windows and left arrow and windows and right arrow the application is on one side and the QTP test is on the other side okay 
this is where we are saying QTP look and learn that is what's doing on the left and right side is what we're going to be doing on the application so the first thing I will do is I'll click on the annual salary and I will enter 65,000 out here so 65000 just as a sample and then I will hit a tab let us see if it has done any recording out here do you see this team it has put something called as a browser dot page dot web edit dot set right and then it has got some value out here similarly contribution we will talk about uh, making it nine percent and again I'm gonna hit a tab and then a new line of code got generated out here what is QTP doing right now it is learning it is in a recording state and then let us say that the current age we will make it as 35 and I will retain everything else as is and then click on calculate what what we have done primarily team is we have instructed QTP to do a certain set of activities and it has learned them through this code all right so I'm going to stop the recording at this point and I will close the browser. So what did we do? We've asked QTP to learn certain activity that will perform on the application and note that information down. So when it notes that information down, it does two things, team. The first thing it does is what it, sh it should do. Okay, it is the what portion. And the second thing is called where it should do a specific activity third one is any additional info needed all right these are the three questions that QTP tries to answer for itself how does it do it when we do a recording it is observing what we're doing because we are doing something on the application it is trying to look at control your system and see where we are clicking what we are entering in the keys and so on and put everything and the whole idea of this code is answering these questions what where and additional info needed all right so this portion of the code which you will master by end of the project first project for sure is this the first portion of where let's talk about in fact this where let's put it here as the first one control X Control V. What I'll do is I will increase the font of what we have here. So go to the font and increase it so that it's easy for you to see. Everyone with me so far, team? So like I said, like I promised, I'm going through the basics, fundamentals. But remember, we will increase the speed very significantly, very quickly. Okay? I'm showing you, I'm showcasing you the code, how it's looking and so on. So this specific portion is basically talking about the where part of the understanding this one is talking about the what part and finally this is talking about any additional info needed all right let's take a simple example team okay let us say that a new employee joins uh, your team all right and you are lead a QA lead in that project and you have a new QA engineer joining very fresh into the project now you are supposed to guide that individual what do you do first you'll say one uh, access documents all right two you will say read documents all right three you will say uh, present your understanding all right from an English standpoint this is easy so for someone who's comes and say go access documents what is the first question he or she will ask you lead thank you so much I will do it but where are those documents correct where are those documents and then what they know now you said access then I will do that and exactly the same thing where are the same documents which document are you saying and what do you want me to do read so as QTP the way it is putting this information is let's say um, the document whatever document is in 
a shade folder z slash uh, abc dot doc that is the document dot access all right then the next one it is doing in a similar way everyone with me team you understanding how we are going through this i'm trying to give you an example to understand how the code is being made okay next one similar way it is saying document shared folder same document it is saying uh, read so that you understand what it is you're going to read this document and then present your understanding let's say this is the next one same document dot present fourth one you will say update and you will do the exactly the same thing again but in this case update but for updating what do you want to update in the document there is a para so and so whatever you write and in the para there is a specific uh, name or a word call something and you will update that all right dot update it with something else all right with a number or with some other character so you are saying where the document is and what to do where this document is what to do where this document is within the document there is a paragraph within the paragraph there is a word you update that word with something else here is where you giving additional information in the exact same manner qtp is understanding this it is saying where is the browser so the application is in the browser it tries and learns about the browser and keeps that information then where is the page there is a page within the browser and then within the page there is a web edit field it's a type of an object within a page and then what to do now you understand team so there is a what there is a where and there is any additional information that is needed that is how qtp works now let's talk very briefly about the concept of objects i hope i'm able to draw with this otherwise i'll use a paint no this is not coming it's drawing somewhere in the background somewhere it is all drawings and let's open up paint yeah paint at least let us draw let me talk about little bit about objects in and then to be very clear for you how the code is will do i expect you if you are listening to this for the first time to master all these concepts right away no i am introducing it to you we will continue to use it day in day out for the next 3 weeks and you'll automatically master at that point making sense till then you will get introduced to various aspects of what we're going to be doing now let's talk about an object in so i talked about something called as a uh let me see if i'm good at drawing a document right within the document there are many paras okay like para 1 p1 p2 and so on so within each para there are many words correct so i am having to tell what to do where because unlike your new qa engineer qtp is dumb unified functional testing tool is absolute an idiot box it does not have any intelligence by itself however it has got a great great skill it will do exactly what you ask it to do and it will do it accurately over and over in a very very fast manner extremely fast that is what it is good at and that is the reason it has become so powerful but it is your skill of teaching it where to do what it will become important so in this case this is something called as a parent object all right team there is something called as an object everything that we work with are basically objects in real life qtp or uft treats all the objects that we want it to interact on the application under test as objects and it recognizes them as objects so this is an object called a parent object because within this object there are child objects 
there are multiple objects with our child even they are objects but they are belonging to a parent all right and then within them there are even more different uh, child so there is a lot of parent child relationship now why is this important for example to be able to identify where very simple concept is your physical address team for example i live in california is it enough for me to identify where i live no i have to say california i have to say los angeles then i have to give my street address and if i live in an apartment a unit number that is when i will be able to identify where it is so california becomes the parent in fact if i want to be more specific i have to talk about united states and then california and so on and then you go further down and down everything that i have spoken about is basically objects so qtp takes the effort to recognize them as object so this is one object called browser within the browser there is a page within the page there is a web edit element and another web edit another web edit for each one it is giving a name and saying what to do the only difference here is same browser same browser how do i know because it's the same name here whatever is in their quotes same page even the page has not changed only the object here has changed here it has changed here it has changed here it has changed another simple example team if i'm asking you to do something with my car for example i will say car the name of my car is my car all right then i will say in the front seats all right there is a driver seat and there is a passenger seat so i'll say driver seat that's the name of it okay and i'll say sit then i will say in the same car oops control c control v in the same car i will say sit in the front seat and then drive you're already there while you're there in the front seat you're going to be driving okay so you are trying to get to a specific object for every object team there are couple of things which is very important control n don't save this just open a new one so objects have something very important thing one is a name of an object right a name is to identify who not identify to be able to call that person then there is something called as identification of an object how do you know that this is that object okay there is an identification of the object then finally there is something called as a method or action that you can perform on an object we will talk about this action little later just the name and identification if you differentiate and you understand the concept then we'll get into the next level every object qtp what it does is it gives it a name it says this 401k calculator space how is the name it has given to an object and it has stored it in a place called as an object repository so if i do something called as a control r it will open up a place called object repository i will not go deep into this object repository today we will get to it tomorrow now uh, in the next class okay but what it does is every time it tries to take notes why because it's a dumb tool it has got no intelligence by itself if it has to repeat the same thing it has to know what it has to do and that specific information it will note oh, okay browser let me put it here page let me put it here so i can go and change the name of it and let's say i'll just say ie okay 11 or 12 i don't even know which version it is what did i do i just changed the name out here in a very simple manner i'm not going to do anything else observe what happens to the code here did you see what ha just happened team it has updated it automatically so to recognize this application first qtp needs to know the name of it then it takes some details here to identify it very simple team for example all right let us talk about um the audience right now there are about 125 participants in this session all right in this session there are let's assume two participants with the same name called vijay all right is vijay enough for me to identify someone probably it's a smaller uh, uh, unit there it's enough but it is a name through which i'll address you the same name can be there for anyone else but to identify you i might need your email 
I may need your phone number or I may need your social security number and so on. So the name is used to call you. So when I say Vijay, I'm wanting to call you. I'm trying to interact with you. But identification is used to know who it is. The same information is stored in QTP. This is where it is storing the name of that object and here it is storing the properties that can uh, identify that object. I don't want you to remember anything beyond this for now. It's just a simple concept which we will master as we go along. But that is how we will interact with each and every object. Now let me delete this. What I did, did save it. What we did so far was a simple record. I asked QTP learn what we did. Now what I am doing is QTP you have learned something. Show me what you have learned. Repeat that action and that is running your test. Okay. So this play button out here or play icon. Click on it and it will try and execute the same test over. So I am going to say run and let's see what happens. It has minimized or taken the QTP to one side, it has opened the application, it has gone to the website, it has entered some information. Is it the correct information? And at the end, it has opened up another pop-up called as result. I don't want us to look at the results right now. It is something we will do eventually. Results are not critical right now because we are learning to automate. Once we do automation, then we will do testing. It is very easy at that point. So. We have said 65,000, it has entered 65,000. Wonderful. I said 9%, it has done 9%. I've said 35, it has done 35. So whatever we have asked it to do, it has performed. And finally, it clicked on calculate. Based on that, it has put that information to you. All right. Now, this is how QTP has done it when we asked it to record. This is a record test. So I'm going to go and save this as sample tc through record and run this is the name that i'm giving and we will save this test i've created a new folder called c colon slash uft within that i've put that test all right let us go back to our plan now and see what we have done team so drive.google.com oops i need to log in give me a second please So any questions while I'm doing this? Even if there are questions, I may not have an answer for you right now, only because of the fact that I'm introducing a few concepts. And these concepts will take a little bit time for you and eventually you'll become very good at it. All right? So I'm just going to say yes. And uh, number four, fourth members, we have an automation. So team, I'm requesting once again, all of you not to do any editing or do anything with the documents out here, okay? Because these documents are very important for us to keep. In fact, what I will do is just to be sure, I'm going to download this file at the end of it so that uh, we can, um, I can do it offline also. All right, so here we are. So we did a simple record and run using UFT. This is what we have done. Now what we will do, team, we will do the same in the manner we are supposed to do as automation engineers. Okay. The first thing that we are trying to do out here is called identify the objects in the application under test. Now, in fact, a second step to it is insert one about this and we I'll call this as 5.1. It is between 5 and 6 and it'll say add the objects to object repository and rename them. That is the next step we will do. Now, the way we have done a simple record and run is very simple and easy team and it is so neat that you will also think is it even essential for us to uh, do it manually anymore? Why should we do it manually, add this objects and so on? You will understand this towards the end of the project, not right now. So how are we going to do that process? Very simple. Team. We will start with a new test file, new test or do control N and this test I'm going to name it as uh, custom UFT test. 
one why am i saying custom because i am creating it we are we are creating it all by ourselves so to create our own test without using record and run the first thing is we need to identify the objects in the application at this point in time we need to open up the application so i'm going to go here and let's open up the application 401k calculator.org what are the objects in the application that we need so we have designed specific test cases for those test cases which are the objects that we need we have to first identify them and the objects are annual salary 401k contribution current age retirement age anything else that we've missed we did yeah correct the button calculate so anything that the test needs to do it needs to understand this button or link i don't know looks like a button it may be a link but this specific object there's one more thing that we've forgotten team remember go back to the test case and see click calculate after that in fact two more assert <laughs> i'm getting some good selenium terms also out here what are the additional objects that we need to identify verify what verify is the what portion but where is that object or what how shall we name it the year and the 401k balance correct so these are the objects that we need now qtp the first thing we will do is we will say first thing i'm writing some notes out here team so one identify the objects two add the objects to the repository okay three write the skeleton code to the uh, test code for the test case now these are my notes this is not a code of qtp or vb script so these are called as commands what you do with commands is you select them and say do not think of that as a code qtp i know you're dumb enough but just this ignore this text this is just for you to understand for me to understand what i need to be doing do a control m team control m what it does is it just puts a uh, hyphen towards the uh, uh, beginning of your sentence and it says treat that as a comment all right that is all it does okay so once we put this to the beginning of the code it automatically changes the color to being green and you are set there so now have we identified the objects yet yes second thing is add objects to the repository what is a object repository you remember i talked about objects they have names and they have identifications right so a place where you store this information is a repository for example all right let us say um i have i have uh, let's say there are about 125 participants in this session correct so where do i store who is who in this go to training or go to webinar in this case automatically uh, saves all that information in a list it puts a name uh, email address and a phone number for me and it stores that in a specific place and that plus place is in a report that is there that kind of a report or information is stored in a place called as object repository the details about objects are stored in a repository now if you go under resources tab so the first tab we saw was file and new test we didn't see anything else all of these options we haven't yet seen then now we are doing something called as resources and here you see object repository the first option yes we also saw record and run these are the features you'll find under record and the run under run but if you notice there are so many other features 
these are basically enhancements to what we could do over and above all of this. Eventually, we will get to them. So right now, just a object repository under resources or controller. So let us look at it. Why is this empty? Why is it that this is empty? Earlier we saw that this had some information, right? Why is it empty now? Number one, it's a new test. Okay. When we do a record, QTP does two things. Tim. One, writes the code in this space called action one. It writes the code in action one. And then two is enters or stores the details of all objects in the repository. Then we do a record. But when we do our custom test, and this is what you and I will be recognized by team. Record, no, no one is going to recognize you or credit you for what skill you have. This is where you will have to add objects and you'll have to write the code. So both of these things we have to do. But that is where the beauty of the whole tool will be. This is just notes again. So just do a control M and make them as comments so that it doesn't get executed. Now what we need to do is add objects. So we know what the objects are. QTP now has a powerful feature as part of this object repository called as add objects. Do you see this? Add objects to local. It talks about something called as a local repository. What is a local and shared object repository? You will get to expose to it a little later. For now, this is your local repository, what we have here. Okay. So as soon as I click on plus, what it does is QTP minimizes uh, its own window. And you'll see that you have a chance to point to any object. So let's say I click on this object. It says that there is a window paint and some kind of other detail it gives. As soon as you click in an object, it thinks that that is the object you want and it will try and do it. So what you should do is first windows button on your keyboard and left arrow. That way you are controlling where your QTP view will be. Second, bring your application to focus, do a windows and right arrow. That way you can also see both of them together and try and get the objects that you want as part of uh, in, in the current view. That will be easy. Then. Now go back and click on the plus sign and then let us go to the application and add the first one. As soon as I add that, it will tell me that the parent object is browser. Under that, there is a child object called page. Under the page, there is another child object called web edit of type web edit. What are the types and all that? We will be coming to it later, team. And then it is add, it will add all of this as soon as I say, okay. In the same structure, it will go ahead and add everything, team. Now, what you need to do here, as soon as we do this is, uh, let me bring this here. I add objects to the repository. Before I write a code, the next one is rename objects to something more apt. What do I mean? To? Oops. Everyone with me, I know I'm going very slow because it is important. A lot of you are at the beginner level, but you will see how we quickly will pick up the speed. And there are videos and exercises for you to do between now and the day three. That way we will be able to go faster. But these are fundamentals, foundations, very critical. There is no way you can skip it. That's why I'm taking all the effort to repeat it. Team. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to bear with me on it. Why do I have to rename the object? Number one, why should we rename? What is it, the name that it has given? So the name it has given is 401k calculator, um, vertical bar, how? Why did it give? It took some detail and gave a specific name to the object, some kind of a logical name to it. As soon as it found something, it gave some logical name. It is not giving something random. It is taking something and giving it. Where is taking, what is taking, not a criteria right now, but something over a period of time. So we will change it something I can we can relate with. I'll just say this is IE browser. Okay. Next one is the page. For the page, what I will do is I will call it as it's a home page for that, right? I'll just call it as home. And the next one is the field for annual salary. It is right now, it is saying web edit, but 
that doesn't make sense. When I look at the code, I can't understand anything. So I'll call this as annual salary. All right. So now what we're doing, the biggest thing that we do as part of this training program and how I want you to learn QTP is how we are organized in our learning. See all the data driven framework test cases, how we have the uh, plan of what you'll be doing. Everything is going in a smooth flow. It is in a very organized fashion. The same thing with our code, how we name the objects, how we do everything is in a very organized manner. So without further delay team, let us go ahead and add few more objects. So where is this application right now? Application is here. Next object plus contribution to 401k. Click on that. Say OK. Now. It has shown the same details like it showed for the first object, but it didn't go and create new object. It said same browser, same page, but a new object. And this is the 401k. So I'll call it as 401k. Okay. Next. Uh, current age. So see, it's got the same details. It has picked up from the application, but as soon as I add it, it will add it under the uh, renamed objects that we have. And this is current age. So I'll just call it a CH. It'll be easy for us to identify with it. And then we will talk about retirement age. And this I will now name it to retirement age. Okay. And then finally one more object calculate. Actually two more objects. So we have a link calculate. See now calculate. I don't have to worry. It has taken and named that correctly. It is apt. It looks good. So I don't have to worry about renaming it. All right. Plus finally one more object this specific information here. So image graph image whatever. I don't know what it is, but this is what we want to verify. Let's assume. Okay. It should have been a text. I don't know why it got it as an image. Wow. It is generating this as an image. So this is going to be tough for us to do something about. But we'll find a way. All right. Um, try a reverse 401k calculator. That's fine. Not a problem. I didn't realize that this specific information, it is putting it up as an image and not as a text. You see this team? No problem. Let's see what we can do about it. All right. So objects added as part of our execution plan. So we go back to our plan and update that thing quickly. Identify the objects, add the objects to the end, rename them. So we have identified them. So let's say 50. 50% 50 done here and we've added the objects to the repository. We have not yet written the code. I have just have another two, three minutes team. I also want to take the question, but so let's write the code in the next um, session. I want to show you when I do the custom test and when you see what it has done when it did a record, how is it different? You have been exposed to a little bit about objects. You've been exposed to how we can do a record and run. We have also learned a little bit about object repository where all the objects are stored. How we could add them by ourselves into an object repository and rename the objects. We have not yet come to writing our custom test. So in the next session, we will start writing the test. We will get into something called as variables. We will then get into uh, some custom checkpoints that we will create. Finally, we will develop a framework, loops, if statements, conditions, and all of that. All right. So team, at this point, I'm open to take any questions that you may have uh, so that uh, we can get prepared for the next session. All right. Let's see. Why is the calculate came on top of hierarchy and not bottom? Okay. Good question. Why do you think this came on the top? So when we added these buttons, calculate came at the top and all of this came in the bottom, right? So what it did is it basically sorted them by names. Then 401k should be at the top. Why is it not? It has sorted them on the type of object and then the name of the object. So in the type, this is an image. So I is first and then it has link L is after that and then W web edit is after that and under web edit all of them in an alphabetical order. You will get all the recording sessions teams like the first day. I'm hoping that you've seen that you've also been emailed the link to where the video is hosted. Similarly, you can go back after a few hours. The video shall be there. All right. Will you have to record only IE browsers, not any other application. So for now, that is our focus. However, there is a feature for Firefox also, but not as robust as IE is. What else team?
and please team like try and keep your questions very relevant to what we have done so far that way we can gradually progress otherwise we may be jumping the gun uh, let's see we will will we learn descriptive programming too absolutely that is the most essential portion we will be learning that um, as we get to the third project how can i practice more so what you have to do is very simple you have to do and repeat exactly what i've been doing and that should be more than enough but right now go with the sessions and watch the videos that i've asked you to watch uh, in the day one the first six chapters try to download eft but unable to get it shainas like i said use the members forum technical forum itelearn.com/forum go to your qtp membership uh, forum and then ask a question search for an answer or ask a question there please does the order of objects important no here it does not matter but the order in which you write the code in the custom test is very important so is it like first you want to enter the age or first you want to click the calculate button which order you want to perform the activities is very important what is exactly web edit class so this is something that i intend to answer when we go later but primarily what happens is um, just to give an overview qtp has to recognize the type of an object as well when it does add objects to the repository it wants to recognize the type why because depending on the type of an object it differs as to what you can do with it so for example if it is a document what can you do with the document you can read you can access you can update you can delete you can share you can present and so on let's say if it is a car what can you do with a car you can go forward you can go back you can turn left you can turn right you can park it and so on so depending on the type of an object you can do a specific activity so you will see when we start writing the custom code that web edit you can do specific activities basically what is a web edit web edit is a edit field in an application where you can enter some information link is uh, another type of an object where you can click on that link image is something more visual you can see the image so depending on the type or which is also called as the class of the object you are able to decide what you could do on them and the information that you see here team is basically the information that is used to identify the object all of this we will be mastering as we keep going along where are videos kadija uh you should check your email all the information has been sent to you over the email it is there on itlearn.com slash um, i don't know there's a page under that does you have to have something like object spy to learn new objects yes it does object spy is something we will use very actively before we get in while we do descriptive programming okay because we need to learn a lot about objects their properties what are used to identify them what are used to describe them and how we could use descriptive programming and bypass something this object repository if we put the objects from object if we pull the objects from object repository does it create the vb script automatically so seniors we will explore that exactly a simple just another 10 minutes if i had i could have shown that today unfortunately let's do um let's do that uh, on monday session why salary increase and in others are not considered as object they are considered as objects we have not added them yet because we don't need them yet that's the reason oh it, it in fact that is added considered as graphic image so the whole thing got recognized as one image what happened is i thought this was text okay i thought that this specific thing was a text but this whole thing is one image do you see this as soon as i highlight like for example this this is text but this one happens to be an image that is the uh, complexity we have that's fine we will find some alternates to move move forward with this all right team so um, most of the questions are answered at this point there are still questions coming in uh, the any questions that are relevant to what we are doing right now we will do it calculate is a button why you calling so very good question what happens is 
QTP looks at this object. How does QTP know if it is a button or a web edit or an image and so on? How does it know? When we add the object to the repository, how does it recognize what type of object it is? What it does is it goes through the code, the HTML file that is there in the background to create this application. And it will then try and identify what type of an object it is. So when it went through calculate here, if you right click and say something called as inspect element, it will show you the code <coughs> in the HTML code where this is. See, this one is a A hyperlink code. A is basically your anchor text which is um, identifying a link and that is why it put it as an image. However, it has a class, some class called button underscore filter that is giving it a design using something called a CSS. It's got a specific style sheet and this button filter, if you look at this, in which you don't really have to master right now, talks about what is the background, what, what kind of a, um, size that should be, what should be the font size and so on. All that information, it will decide. One second, Tim. I'm trying to go down on this page. Where is this? Why is why does this not work? Here? This is the thing with the Windows that gets annoying once you get start used to Mac and all that. Okay, there you go. So this is basically a link. It is designed to look like a button using some style sheets. So for QTP, all that doesn't matter. It goes to the code and it sees what it is. For example, if it sees this, it you'll see something called as an input for this uh, field. So I said annual salary, inspect element, inspect element. Why is it not going there yet? Contribution to 401k. Right click, inspect element. This is supposed to go take it there. It's not even navigating correctly. In fact, what we'll do is we'll use Firefox to do a lot of research on this thing. That will be input. So depending on the type of object it is in the HTML code, it takes and gives it class. Okay. And team, again, I'm not expecting you to be mastering what I've shown you right now, but you will eventually as we go through uh, the flow of these sessions in the coming few days. Let's see any other relevant questions that I could answer today. What are the reasons for choosing to automate a project? Very good question, Sandeep. Keep it more towards the end of the session. And also, as I explained to you about the ERA concept, that will become clear for you. All right. One second, Tim. All right, team, that's it from my side for today. I'm sure there are a few more questions. The only reason I've not answered is so that uh, they, they've already exceeded the time. Plus, it may not yet be a topic for us to discuss. However, please keep your questions handy, team. What I would want to do is I will address them as we get into uh, the session third day. I will start with finishing your questions and then move forward. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining. Appreciate it. Take care and see you on Monday. Thank you all. Bye now. Thanks all. I'm still trying to end this webinar. Okay, there you go. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of the week and weekend. Thank you.